The first fireplaces were strictly functional for heating the home, cooking meals, and warming water for bathing. Over time, fireplaces appeared in other rooms of the house and acquired aesthetic features such as wood, stone, or tile work. This ceramic fireplace is a heritage model, inspired by fireplaces of the late 19th and early 20th century. Certain tiles are exact replicas of originals. At the ceramic factory, they mix water with clay, feldspar, and silica in a pug mill. Together, these formulate a clay blend. Once the mix is the right consistency, the operator presses a button and the mill switches to extrusion mode. This forces the clay blend through a mantle-shaped die and produces a 10 to 15 inch long extruded mantelpiece. They trim the piece with a cutting wire to the precise length required. They use this extrusion method for making longer pieces. If they need shorter ones, they often cast them individually in a mold. When casting, they add significantly more water to the clay blend to produce a liquid clay called slip. They pour the slip into a plaster mold. The porous plaster gradually absorbs most of the water, leaving a layer of clay about six millimeters thick on the walls of the mantle-shaped cavity. After a few hours, they pour out the excess slip and open the mold to extract the cast mantelpiece. Once the clay becomes firm enough to handle, they carefully trim off the excess around the opening in the mold. Then they gently smooth down the seam along the junction between the two halves of the mold. On the opposite side of the pour hole, they cut out a matching hole. This will help the clay dry faster by enabling air to flow through the inside of the piece. To compensate for shrinkage, the molds and extrusion dies are designed 11% larger than the size of the finished piece. Clay shrinks as it dries. To make the fireplace's ceramic tiles, they produce a rubber mold of two adjoining tiles and place it inside a metal casing. They also include a release system to help with extraction. They fill the casing with an exceptionally strong type of plaster. It sets in about half an hour taking on the shape of the rubber mold. This plaster casting is the die they'll now use to produce the tiles. They mount the die on what's known as a ram press because it literally rams a block of clay in the die and compresses it with 30 tons of pressure. The tile die is also 11% larger than the final size to compensate for shrinkage during drying and firing. They remove excess clay and send it back to the pug mill to be recycled. Then they position a board under the die and activate the release system, which extracts the clay with a blast of compressed air. They trim off the excess clay. Once dry, the tiles and mantelpieces are ready to be glazed. Glaze is a chemical formula containing finely ground silica, combined with different combinations of metallic elements to produce specific colors. They use a spray gun to apply glaze to the mantles and a tube tip applicator to glaze the tiles. The tile design has raised borders between its components. These are called Cuenca lines. They prevent the different color glazes from flowing into each other. The glazed mantelpiece and tiles now go into a gas-fired kiln for 12 to 14 hours. The high temperature, 2100 degrees Fahrenheit, triggers chemical reactions which harden and strengthen the pieces. The clay's mineral composition transforms into a completely new configuration of crystals and glass. As for the glaze, its precise formulation of metallic elements produces a specific color and the silica melts into a glass surface. The ceramics are now smooth and shiny and ready to transform an otherwise ordinary fireplace into a work of art.